All right, so welcome back, and here's another Lico problem. So today we're doing one called 2038, or really uh, remove color pieces if both neighbors are the same color. So what do we want to do here? Essentially, Alice and Bob are playing a game, and this game has an input called colors, and it's represented kind of in binary nature, where there's letter A's and there's letter B's here. And so when it's Alice's turn, um, Alice is allowed to basically remove a letter A that's in the middle here, um, so long that there are three kind of contiguous or consecutive A's in a row. Okay, so there can't be any letter B's between them, it has to be three letter A's in the row, and so Alice will remove the piece in the middle. Uh, one constraint here is that naturally Alice is only removing letter A's, it can, Alice cannot remove any letter B's. And basically for Bob, when it's then Bob's turn, Bob must remove letter B's, but Bob can only remove the middle letter B when there's three uh, basically contiguous or consecutive B's in a row. Okay, so basically the game will keep going until one of them can no longer make a move. All right, so for this example, it's pretty simple. Uh, when it's Alice's turn, Alice can remove this letter A here, and so basically this middle one will go away. Then when it's Bob's turn, well, there's no three contiguous Bs, and so now Bob can no longer play. All right, so how do we actually uh, write an algorithm and kind of programmatically solve this problem? Well, before we do that, I think one real catch here is that if you look at the problem, the input size is very large. And so kind of actually doing the game and playing the game won't really work in this case because well, it just you'll get a time limit exceeded or kind of leak code. Um, when you're leak code jargon, it's called a TLE. And that's because, well, uh, basically with the size of uh, the color string as our input, um, if we want to actually kind of solve it uh, brute force and actually say, okay, if Alice plays optimally, this would be Alice's turn. And then if we play uh, Bob, and then if we play Alice, and so on and so forth, you'll actually get time limit exceeded. So we have to think about a more clever way to solve this. All right, so how do we do that? Well, uh, basically what the pattern is called is greedy. So we want to come up with a greedy solution uh, so we can basically allow us to kind of cheat around and not actually have to play the whole game to come up with our solution. And so what we're gonna do, I'll quickly, I'll quickly explain what it is and then I'll kind of prove to you why it's kind of gonna work here. All right, so uh, essentially, all that we have to do is have kind of a static window. It's kind of like a sliding window, if you've heard of that pattern before, of a fixed length of length three. Okay, and so essentially this sliding window of fixed length is going to kind of start here and just kind of slide along maintaining that length. And whenever it counters three A's in a row, it's basically going to give Alice uh, one extra point. But when it encounters three Bs in a row, let's say there is uh, two extra Bs here, when it encounters this and the sliding window kind of reaches the end here, then Bob uh, would get a one extra point. All right, so essentially the reason why this works is I'll give you maybe a better example here of let's say that we have something more like this. So we have uh, A, 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 let's add another A at the beginning here. Then maybe we say B, 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 um, let me think. And then let's say we have A again here. And maybe two more A's. Okay, so essentially with this input, how you might imagine to play the game? Well, you would see here, okay. Uh, Alice would get w one point here. And so basically Alice is now at one here. And then once again, the sliding window moves along and we see that, okay, Alice could actually get another point here as two, and then the sliding window moves along, and well, now that's AAB, so Alice can't get a point there. But then when we see that uh, something like this happens, BBB, Bob could get a point, and then basically it slides along here, no one gets a point, no one gets a point, and then it reaches the end. And so basically what this means here is we would say that, okay, uh, because Alice, uh, has more points than Bob, then we would basically return true in this case. Okay, and so what we see here is that um, two things. So that 
you basically got two points here. And that's because, well, how this would work is if Alice plays, they could remove one of these middle points here, say it's initially here, so we remove the middle one. It would be something like this. But then, well, this is still three, and so if you remove the middle one again, that's kind of your second point. So you can actually kind of get uh, two points when you have four consecutive A's in a row. Okay, and so let's just re-add those A's. The other thing here, and what I couldn't initially wrap my mind around, was I didn't know how we could actually do this in a greedy way, because I thought if when Bob plays, maybe Alice would be able to get an extra point, but it doesn't actually work that way. Because you would see here that whenever there is like a barrier between the letter A's and B's, even if Bob plays, because of this window, Bob removes this B, it's never going to allow Alice to get any access to the, ba to the A's beyond these B's because there's always going to be basically letter B's that are barrier blocking it, okay? So whenever there's actually one letter or more of the alternative uh, character, it's always going to prevent you. So regardless of how Alice or Bob plays, it's never actually going to open up any opportunity to get extra points here. And I think for me, that was the main key here. All right, so um, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and um, write out the uh, solution or the coding solution uh, in Python or really in pseudocode, and then we will um, move forward. So, uh, but stay along with me and I'll try to kind of clarify any of my code if I worry that it might not uh, be so intuitive. So uh, naturally, outside of the class and kind of method um, declaration, um, in our method, we would be given uh, an input of uh, something called colors as our input string. And so from there, what we're going to want to return um, is whether or not Alice wins. So true if Alice wins, false otherwise. Okay, so to simplify that, to count the points, we'll have something like uh, Alice, is basically uh, equal to Bob, which is equal to zero. So they're both initially set to zero here. And so from here, what we're going to say is, okay, let's just iterate through this entire string. So let's basically go, and in Python, it's represented like this for, for every uh, integer in the range of, uh, let's just spell it out here, in the range, and I'm kind of spelling this out terribly. I'm not used to whiteboarding in person. But essentially, the catch here is because we want that fixed window size, you have to kind of do a little trick here where we want to start actually at index one so that we can have one index kind of to the previous and then basically to the length of our input array, which is colors, a minus one. Sorry, I kind of went to the very end here. Uh, just to clarify this, uh, it's basically the length of our input array minus one. So one to the length of our input array called colors minus one. All right, and so from here, what we're gonna wanna do is slide that window along. And so that window will be just essentially a window is going to be equal to basically our input array colors and we're just going to slice it. This is called like Python uh, array slicing, which is just a common uh, thing you do so you can kind of index between a certain range within the array. And so it's going to be basically i minus one up to i plus two. And so that's going to give us the three characters between that range there. And so all that we have to do here is if our window is equal to a, 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 then basically, well, Alice here gets a point, so we're gonna add one. Otherwise, if our window is equal to BBB, Bob's gonna get a point here, okay? So this is adding one for Alice. Otherwise, basically same thing here, if our window is equal to BBB, Bob's gonna get a point. So now Bob here, like so, is going to add one extra point. And so finally, that's kind of the main heart of the algorithm. So all that we're gonna to have to do here is basically just return at the end of this um, for loop. So we're gonna say return whether or not Alice 
is greater than ball. And so one catch here is that it has to be uh, strictly greater than. You can't say equals because it's basically going to be um, an odd format or basically Alice is going to play, then Bob's going to play, and then Alice is going to have to play. So because Alice is playing first, it has to be strictly uh, greater than Bob. All right, so that's the solution. That's the kind of whiteboarding walkthrough. I think the main catch here is that you can't solve it kind of brute force way, or at least I wasn't able to. Uh, so you can't just kind of go through the entire game itself. You have to come up with what's called a greedy solution or use the greedy pattern uh, so that you're able to do this without the time limit exceeded. But basically this runs in O of N uh, time complexity, O of N, I kind of spelled that ugly. Um, and then for space complexity, well, that's going to be constant space because, well, we're not using any extra data structures here. We're not using, say, a hash map or an additional array. We're simply uh, just sliding our pointers along here, and what's, we're just using what's given to us. All right, so I hope that helped a little bit, and thanks for watching. Good luck with the rest of your algorithms. All right, see you later.